G'day guys, uh, this model I've just received uh, from Adam Mules in Southwest Sydney. If you're looking for a builder, I recommend him. He used to be on my apprentice. Uh, he's very well versed in construction and he knows how to draw houses in 3D. This is the first model I've received, so if you're a tradie or a designer or you want to follow along, I'm just going to give Adam some feedback on his very first model. All in all, it's a good job, um, so uh, let's have a quick look. I've written some notes up here at the, at the top left hand side that are going to explain and basically because this is a remodel or a reno extension, renovation extension, um, there's a, I would have actually changed it. So if I went control A here, you'll notice that it selected everything but nothing is red which means that when Adam drew his walls he didn't actually um, draw them in as existing and new and if I opened up the wall tool I'll explain that. When I draw a wall, if I drew it as existing here and when submit, I would then draw a wall that was red, but because everything's selected, I don't do that. So I'm going to go wall, uh, and then existing, and I drew it. What mean? What it means is that that wall's not going to be changed. And if I went Control A again, notice this wall's red, which means nothing is quantified from those particular items. Now, when you're doing a renovation or remodel, or or you're extending an extension on a house. You don't want to quantify what's already there if you're not going to touch it. However, I'm going to go back to my wall tool again. A lot of the cases when you're doing a remodel, you'll actually want to keep the structure or different things about it. Uh, and you might just want to replace the internal lining or the external lining. So now I've gone remodel. If I went to my materials on the outside, I can replace. You see there's a button there that says replace material. So I could choose a different material to go on it. Let's choose this one here. Make something a little bit clearer to see. That one. Uh, and I might want to chase my, change my internal lining, my plasterboard, and redo that as well. And therefore, if I draw a wall, it's still red because it's an existing wall, but if I did a takeoff on that wall, it will actually just show me what's being replaced in that wall. And you can see I've got cladding, and in the cladding, I have 5.48 square meters of cladding, and my internal finishes, I wish we'd have the same amount, 5.4. 85 square meters of cladding, internal lining. And basically it means that I didn't allow it to do redo frames or anything like that. So when I did an existing wall, obviously when take off, selection only, basically nothing is shown because it's existing. Now, it doesn't mean you have to redraw the walls. All you do is select the walls that are existing, that he's already drawn, because you can do it after if you want to. I'm just gonna select these ones here, go to the wall tool, and then just change them to existing. Right, and now all my, the walls, if I go control A, all the existing walls aren't going to be quantified. You can see everything that is red. It's very clear, very easy. Uh, when you're drawing walls, ensure that you spend a little bit of time double checking the, the, um, the settings there of what type of wall it is. It'll make it a lot easier. The same will happen with demolition walls, except they'll come in dotted on the plan. Now, I'm going to have a quick look through the model so you can see what it is that's been done here. And... I'm going to go back to all. And we're going to uh, just quickly what I know about the model. Not much. I received, I had a quick conversation with him yesterday. I said, send me over a model. I'll have a quick look, give you a review. Uh, so they can make it a little bit easier. And you can see that he's putting kitchens and so on. Those kitchens could have been attributed with information. So if I right clicked it and went to the BIM tool, I could actually say, this is the kitchen and we're going to allow a provisional allowance of $30,000. Right? Poorly spelled. And we're going to say 30K. Because we obviously you want to draw the project so you understand what's in it, but at the same time you want to be adding your allowances as you draw. Because it enables you to understand the project but also uh, quantify price as you go and basically it enables you to feel more confident with the quote that you deliver to the client. Um, the, the model itself is not too badly presented, it's, it's okay. Um, you can put grass and a whole heap of other things and I might even quickly talk about how to do a quick render of it as we move forward, let's have a look. Um, so the next thing I noticed was that uh, I wrote down here roof uh, sloping and skewing and I'm just going to go in here and I'm going to just have a look at this. You can see Adam's drawn this as a, a hip roof and he's changed them to gables which can be a little bit annoying. The best way to do that, I'm going to quickly just draw something similar over here. Uh, let's see, maybe go from here. Rectangle. Let's just say this is the roof. 
that we want to draw on the outside. I would use my skillion roof tool or sloping roof tool to do that. So hip roof, uh, no, sorry, the first one here. Uh, choose the pitch that's going to be, let's say it's 10 or 12 degrees, and go submit. I would actually draw my from my gutter line first, from here to here, to here, to here, to here. And I didn't spend the time to get this right, guys, but just so you can see what I'm doing. Uh, this is a better way to do lower roofs. Right, because essentially you've got more control. It's quicker, it's easier. You should spend a little bit of time and, and watch a tutorial. All tutorials are here, guys, video tutorials. Uh, makes it a lot easier. Right, and that's the best way to do it. You can see because I had different pitches and overhangs and so on. I, I, I didn't get that right, but obviously you would draw it as per the plan and you would adjust your pitches to suit. Okay, so that's the next thing that I noticed there. Uh, floor level height on the plan. Let's see if I can grab the plan in here. Uh, okay. Uh, the, the floor level shows that it's got a set of stairs that are coming up and there's a 900 difference between the floor However, when I look at this model, that isn't the case. And I would have basically drawn it at the correct height and increased the wall height in this area to do that. Uh, and essentially, just to show you that, let's say, for instance, this is the house and this area here was raised like that. Whatever the distance was, I should write in, I'll write in 900, I'll make it a meter. Right, therefore I'd go my walls and I would change it so these lower section walls here would be three meters, uh, and the upper section wall would be two meters. If the ceiling heights are lining up, I haven't seen elevations on this project, guys, but yeah, that's how I would do it. Obviously, guys, I'm just doing this as I go, right? Um, and therefore, I get in my, my cladding's lining up and so on. That's that's how I would do that. And then I would go and use the stair tool to put my stairs in according to what it showed on the plan. Uh, stairs uh, here uh, and choose the type of stairs. Let's go straight, floating staircase, uh, submit, put the stair in, and then change the height to a meter. Uh, choose the materials if you want to and go submit and then I would just simply move it to wherever it was that I needed it to go so let's just turn this around here and wherever it showed on plan is, is what I would do there it's it's enables you to see complexities or things that might come up because of the step in the wall and if we looked at the structure we can see how that worked and double nogs here because of the wall height All right hope that makes sense feel free to ask questions below guys um, rafters design I'm gonna go to all again or seal, and uh, looking at this plan, if I go to my structure here, you can see that he's actually put in one raked wall, but he didn't actually rake this wall here and so on. Um, but on a job like this, being that the, so I quickly did a measurement here before, I'm just gonna say tape measure, uh, from here to here, the rafter span is 5.4, that's pretty big, it means you're probably using, you know, a 300 millimeter rafter, however, if, Let's just I'll quickly move this over here. We actually put purlins on this roof that went this way. I'm assuming the distance is different, but it's also going to save putting rafters and battens, so it's more of a cost-saving exercise. And if I went back to all here, um, what that would mean, and I, I quickly created another model to explain this, because it's not a tutorial, guys, it's just an explanation. See, what we actually did here is we ran purlins this way along the project because otherwise I had to run a, a rafter and a batten to do it. And if I ran LVL purlins between the two, let's see if I can get back there, structure, I could probably do the job quicker, more efficiently, have my overhangs and everything there because it doesn't, on this particular case, it doesn't have an overhang over the walls. So the way I would do that, guys, I'd select inside of my roof, right? And then, obviously, I'm going to just put it in transparent view so I can see where that wall is inside. And I'm going to select this one here. I'm going to go move and control. And all I'm really doing is splitting the face. And, 
Guys, the tutorials are all inside of this, so let's just move that to wherever I can get it. Say there. Right, now I can select this face and this face, and I can go right click, roof framing, create roof framing. Now I could put rafters and battens in and, and do a comparison, or I could basically exclude the rafters, notice here, exclude rafters, purlins, and then choose the size of the purlin that I require, and I'm gonna make it a, I would actually use a thing called Design IT to do this, guys, so quickly I'll touch on that, because span tables are always a pain in the ass. This product uh, program is called Design IT, it is free. Uh, Maya Timber in Sydney, I think they supply Australia wide. When you first open it up, it's gonna ask you what type of timber you might wanna use, I'm gonna say apply here. And you, then you can put in your job address and everything like that. Um, yeah. Now I'm gonna to go to roof framing here, and I'm gonna look for roof beams or what rafters or whatever it is that I'm looking for, and I can figure out what span I want for a common rafter. And we said 5.4 in here before, 5.4. Uh, rafter spacings, I'm assuming it's 600. Uh, roof kilogram mass, it even helps you with that. So sheet roofs with a ceiling lining. Uh, it's 20 kilograms per square meter. Um, and the ceiling is attached to the underside here. Let's just do that and go calculate. It should come up with the size rafter I require. I'm kind of rushing this through, guys. But this is the way to do it. Uh, it will spit out all of the sizes. Maybe see, maybe that's too large. Um, you know, maybe I need to drop it back, and this might be the reason why I do it. So changing it uh, to suit whatever it is that you needed to do under purlins, intermediate beams, ridge beams, frame to beams, grade roof beams. Here we go. I'm get this one here. Purlins. Okay, purlins. Uh, I don't care, I'm going to say 5.4 here again. Uh, and let's say, I don't know, 600s. And you can choose the product that you want it to do. I'm gonna go my span 15 and calculate and see if I can get that. There we go, okay. So I can get away, I would never use a rigidity ratio of 1.1. Guys, I'm quickly going through this, but let's just say that it says we can get away with 240 mil. Therefore, if I close that, I can now go in here and choose LVL, uh, 240. Right. Uh, and I'm going to go submit. And you'll notice that it put those rafters in there for me. If I went to my structure, you can now see that I now have purlins in there according to the roof that was there. They're also quantified, guys. I definitely think that in this particular instance, on this particular type of job, that's how I would do this. Um, Right, so that would be how I go through that. Another thing was a PDF resolution. I'm gonna to go to see all here. And look, I mean, it's okay, I can read it, but I probably would prefer to have a slightly better resolution. I can read those measurements, they're a bit hard. So when you're importing a PDF, basically go to the PDF tool. The help and tutorials are here, but I wouldn't import it as basic, I was import it as good and then you'll have a better resolution. Guys, if you're not getting a better resolution, watch your tutorial, there's some other couple of tips inside of there. Uh, what else would I say on this job? Client presentation, okay, so there's a present tab here. But, you know, I, well, definitely I think that he should have dropped that level if he's gonna show the client because they'll know that there's a step in the floor when they, as soon as he walks them inside the house. So I would have done that. Um, but I probably might, in some cases, do a quick render. Uh, let's have a look here. See, I did open one up. I think I've got it here. Right, and because the reason why I do something like this, and by the way, this is done in a free program. It took me 30 seconds. I'll show you how to do it roughly. Um, is, I'll just see if I can move my head out of the way there for a second. All right, so you can notice I, I quickly did this. So this is a program called Diffusion. You can download it from 3D Warehouse for free. Um, basically, all I wear is Hampton Style House and Residential Estate, and then I click Generate, and it generated these for me. You can do different styles and so on, and generate. I'll quickly do one in front of you. Okay, and basically, uh, you'll notice it's done three more renders. If I said, yeah, you know what, this is kind of what I want to show the client, I'm going to go uh, Add Scene. And what that's done is it's added a scene up here. 
right? And if I had have lined it up or I went back to here, it will put it inside of the model and it will navigate the model to whatever it is. So you probably should put, probably should have pushed update or refresh scene there and then done it. Uh, so guys, yeah, uh, again, diffusion, uh, sketch up. It's a good way to show clients what you you've got planned. Uh, let's go back to here. One other thing that I did notice in this model, and I think Adam's come up with a reasonable solution without any training or anything like that. And basically he's actually used the gable cladding and cut it out. Let's just turn this off a transparent view there. Uh, and he's cut this out, but I did do another model here just to show you the way I would have done it. Um, and essentially I framed it out. So I drew the wall. Uh, and if I clicked on this wall and go wall, just so you can see the settings, what I did is a 140 high wall with a zero header height. And then I made it into a gable and I put in 30 degrees because that was a pitch of the roof. So if I drew a wall over here, let's go, uh, oh, that's already done. Let's just quickly draw another wall. Submit here, right? Now I have a wall, if I went to all, obviously you're gonna have your cladding on it. Now, inside of that wall, I would now go and right click add window uh, add window and I would choose a raked window now you can see it's coming up with an error here because the height of the wall is 140 but the window height I'm just going to put this in as a, a mess uh, say I'm going to change my header height first at the top and I'm going to make it say 1500 if I can fit that in right and now that's cleared and now I could actually go through and my rake direction I want it to be on the right so I'll put it over here I can go and put this window in over here. And you'll notice that I very quickly put a window. Now, if you mess that up or put it outside of, you'll get some strange things. I'll see if I can make a mistake over here. Windows, add window. Uh, and I'm gonna make this one, change it again to 1400, I think I wrote. And I'm going to make the window height small. You're gonna get this, I know. Uh, and it's going to be on the left. I'm going to put it outside where it's outside the wall. Right, I got a really strange thing and I didn't know why that had happened. It's okay, it's only because the window is sitting outside of the wall. And if you go up to your window tool and go to move window and click on the window, you'll notice you now have the ability to move the window around. Click the bottom and then click again to move it down the bottom of the window. Right. And now I can click the center of the window and then click again and then move my mouse to the left and move it to wherever the window is supposed to be. In this instant here, it doesn't know how to deal with these um, headers. So what I would do is I would use the beam tool. I created a keyboard shortcut for that. Choose the beam size from Design IT and I'm just going to quickly draw it in here. Right, and I'm going to go down arrow, down arrow, down arrow to get it to where I want it to be. I'm going to double click. If I select this beam and go right click beams, extend beam to here and right click, I probably should have gone one more stud so it's sitting on top of that load bearing stud. Beams, I'll do it on this side, extend beams. Oops. Extend it to there, right. And then I would select the beam and I would select the wall and I would go right click walls add object to wall. That way when I move the wall wherever it is, everything's selected with it. If I do an edit on the wall, it won't delete that header. Right, so I might want to change the cladding or something like that. Guys, I hope it helps. We're about 20 minutes in. This is the best way to learn to virtual design uh, and add building information modeling to a project so you can prepare it for a quote. I would charge for this service, guys. I did speak to Adam, he said he didn't charge for this because it was his first one and I understand that. However, you're doing a service for the client, especially when you get it right. The client goes, wow, this guy is showing me so much more than any other designer or builder has. Um, he's well versed and he's invested in my project. Obviously you charge for the service because, and what I used to do is I used to charge for this service, but I'd say to the client, I'm gonna, um, do an initial design, I'm gonna draw it up in 3D for you. If I get the job, I'm gonna rebate the money I charge you. Getting the first dollar off the client is a great way to get a job. 
uh, and it's a really good way to get your foot in the door. It's a good way to understand the project. As you can see now, we're starting to get a better understanding of what's going on. That's not the one that I drew in front of you. It's over here. Right, so, and more importantly, it's an excellent way to get a bill of quantities, a cut list for walls, and everything else that you require to build the job. If you've got any questions, guys, ask them below. Uh, I look forward to uh, seeing you guys um, start to learn virtual design and construction. Technology will change your business forever. Cheers.